Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 14 of the Endless Runner series. In this episode, we are going to implement the pause game menu. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started to create our pause game menu. For that, we open up our widget game hut and now add a button, a pause button that we can click. So drag a button in the canvas panel, change its name to pause btn. We will bind this button in our game hut class. So we need to make sure it's a variable and we need to make sure that we use the same name in our class. So let's drag this a little bit down here and under style, under normal, let's add our type in pause, pause button under hovered, our pause button and under pressed, our pause button. For normal, it's white, it's perfectly fine. For let's say hovered, we use a kind of greenish tone. Let's choose something like this and for the same color for this one. Okay, so and resize it a bit and click size to content. And anchors, make sure it's anchored on the top left, it is. So compile this, save this, and let's go into code and add that button. Here in our game hut, we will add a new property. Let's copy this, forward define it as class u button, it's a pointer, and call it pause btn, that's the one that we named it. Hit compile and go back to our menu. And you can see in the graph view, only the coin image, which we didn't bind in the class is visible in, under variables. So the widget binding worked and you can see compile, everything works. If we hit play, you can see our hovering and stuff will work. So this works fine. Now we need to implement the click functionality. So the event that happens when the button is clicked. For that, we will define under protected. We will create a U function. Don't need any parameters and call it void on pause click. We implement this and maybe place it underneath the set coins count. So let's think about what we need to do. First, we need to bind with add dynamic the same, similar, like you see with all the other events, we need to bind this pause click function to the button that once it's clicked, it will fire this event and call this function. So for this, we could either create the binding in initialize hut or what I want to do in this episode to introduce you to the native construct override function that we can do it in this function call. So as you know from blueprints, there are construct events and something similar for user widgets is a function that we will override with virtual void and it's called native construct. It's the native override function that once the widget is constructed, then this will be called. And let's use this, overwrite this, and implement this function and place it best on top of here. And now what we can do and say if pause btn, it should be there, but let's check it for null pointer. It's a good practice. Better check one more thing instead of not checking and getting errors. So pause btn and there is an event called on click and you can see my IDE already or included the button.h so if yours doesn't do it automatically you need to include the components slash button.h file to be able to compile on clicked is the defined event 
and let's add dynamic, the same thing that we are used to by now. This and call it or copy this and say on pause click. Now we bound our function to the event, the buttons event. There's one more thing that we need to do with buttons right now that we will be able to click them. We need to activate an input mode, which is game and UI. You might be familiar with this in Blueprints where you can set the input mode to game, UI or game and UI. And for us to be able to click that button, we need to enable this in case it hasn't been enabled somewhere else. But let's say you widget blueprint library. This is like a special function library for widgets. And we will say set input mode game and UI. For this, we need a game controller. So we use our game controller and we get this by using the gameplay statics function library and say get player controller and this needs the world like most functional libraries in C++ they need the world and then the zero for our first index and say this widget to focus and hit enter. And we selected the wrong one, that's a deprecated function. We need the X version for it. So now this should work. And before we compile and go into test the functionality, let's implement this first. So, so let's figure out what happens on pause click. So first we need to kind of pause the game. And there's some special libraries or functions in the U game play statics that will do this so that we can set the game as paused. And then we need to create our pause menu, which we will create in a second and add this to the screen. So first let's say U game play statics, set game paused, get the world again. And say true. And then we actually need to create our widget. For this, we need again, like you've seen in other episodes, we need the widget class to be able to instantiate it. So let's copy this and make it edit anywhere. Remove the meta tag and make it blueprint read only and call it t subclass of class u user widget and call it pause menu widget class. This we will set in the blueprints later on when we actually create our pause menu. And let's implement this so that we can actually really create the widget, but it won't happen because right now the widget doesn't exist yet, but let's implement the functionality first. So user widget, call it widget equals create widget, get the world and use our pause menu widget class that we defined. And if the widget is valid, then we will call widget add to viewport. So this is actually everything that we need to do in our game HUD. So once the button is clicked, we will set the game to paused, create our widget, our pause menu and add it to the viewport. And the pause menu itself will handle either continuing or restarting the level. So let's compile this and implement the pause menu next. So for testing purposes, you could actually add some log statements in here in the pause click and see if this works, but I will not do this this time. So let's continue with creating our pause game menu widget. So let's go under UMG, right click user interface widget blueprint and call it widget underscore pause menu. Open it up and add two buttons 
to the panel. And let's give them a name, call the first one continue btn and the other one restart btn. As I mentioned when we created the game hut itself, that it's best practice to first create the blueprint widget, which inherits from the user widget class, get everything set up, and then create the class and use reparenting to reparent this widget to our special class. So let's have the restart button down here somewhere, the other one. So under, let's go with the continue button. Let's type in continue, select the button under normal, do the same thing for hover, continue button, and for the pressed. And for that color, let's just make it green, unhovered and clicked, and make the button resize to content. And the anchor we will set to the middle, and the same goes for the restart button. Let's select the restart, and the same for the hovered, and for the pressed and make it the same or green kind of color. Okay, compile it, save it, and this is all we need for that pause menu. And let's go under C++ classes, create a new class, select show all classes and type in user widget, and we call it pause menu. Select create class, and once it's created, we will head over to our code. So in our code, let's add those two buttons as bind widget properties. So to make it easier, let's go to our game hut, copy our button, go into the pause menu, make a protected section and call it continue button. and restart button. And then let's add our virtual native construct. So it's always the same approach. You bind those widgets and then in construct, you if you have buttons and, and need to in initialize stuff, then in native construct, you add those bindings and initialize your values and so on. So let's implement this. Go to our hot CPP and copy these and call it if continue button, then continue button on click. So we need our functions, but let's do the same thing with our restart button. And let's define two functions first. So you function, call it void on continue, click, copy this and call it on restart, click. Implement those two functions and copy this, paste this in here and copy this and paste it in here. So now there's still an error because we haven't included our component yet. So include components slash button dot h. And now our binding kind of works. So here we have our buttons binded and our functions. Let's compile this. Compiles correctly. So in our pause menu, you can see in the graph, there are still the variables. And why is that? Because we still need to reparent our class. So let's reparent blueprint and select pause menu. And you can see the variables are gone. It compiles perfectly. So the binding has worked and we reparent it to our own class. So now that this works, let's go back to our code. So back in our code, let's think about what does continue do. 
in continue, we need to unpause our game and then kind of like remove the widget from our viewport. So the way we do this is like you've seen with the pause menu, the pause button, we use the gameplay statics function or function library and use the set game paused, get the world. And this time we need to set it to false. And the way to remove the widget from the viewport, there is a function called remove from parent. We use this, call it, and this should work. So this is the simple functionality of on continue. We unpause the game and remove the widget that we created. And now for restart level, it's basically the same thing that we did with the run character when it died so that it restarts the level by using the console command. So let's do it like this. I'm not copying things, so let's just get the world. Check if the world is okay but usually you don't need to use this, but it's good practice. I should have done it here as well, but let's let's do it in here. So, and use the u kismet system library, call execute console command, pass in the world, the text and call it restart level. And that's it, that's our pause menu. Let's compile and see if this works. It's compiled. So before we can test it, there's one thing that we need to do in our game HUD. As you can remember, we defined our widget class that we need. And so let's select widget pause menu, compile it, save. And now that we hit play and pause the game, you can see something weird happening. The menu works fine, but I think we didn't anchor the restart to the middle. But let's hit continue, it works. Let's hit pause again and restart restarts the level. So let's fix those issues in the widget pause menu in the designer. And you can see it's anchored to the top left. Let's anchor it to the middle. And there's one thing I kind of want to mention. Let's go head back to code for a second. If we create in our game hut, create our widget. Of course, what we need to do is add a failsafe if is valid pause menu widget class. Then we will do all this. And of course, set the game paused as well. So in case we forget to set the widget class in the blueprint, then this won't happen and we don't get any errors. So it's just some safety measures for not getting errors and so on. So let's head over to our editor for the last time, hit play, hit the pause button and you can see now they're aligned. We can continue, pause again, restart the level. So this works. So I guess that's it for this video. So thank you for watching. I hope you really liked this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. And please like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new episodes are coming out. This would really help me. So thanks again and see you in the next one.